Hello guys, welcome back to Mythic Vision. Long time no see, but basically GCSEs have been so hectic. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys have done so well in the exams before half term. If you're worried about something, don't worry about the past. Just move on and look forward to the exam you have coming up. For example, the B4 exam. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing a video um, today, B4, the processes of life for the exam board ACR 21st century. So yeah, let's get straight into it. There are seven major life processes. So this can be mem memorized with the mnemonic Mrs. Nurg or Mrs. Grand. You'd have gone over at least a thousand times in primary. M is for movement, R for respiration, S for sensitivity, G for growth, second R for reproduction, E for excretion, and N for nutrition. These life processes occur in every single living organism. Now, photosynthesis versus respiration. Photosynthesis occurs only in plants, whereas respiration occurs in humans, animals, plants and microorganisms. The word equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water plus light energy gives glucose plus oxygen. The simple equation 6CO2 plus 6H2O gives C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Just memorise the um, element symbols and put a six in front of everything except glucose um remember glucose is c6h12o6 that's the way i remember it and respiration i remember as the backwards version of photosynthesis so glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water the simple equation is basically the same as photosynthesis but rearranged obviously um, photosynthesis makes food molecules and energy available to living organisms through food chains whereas respiration releases the energy from glucose so that life processes can carry on. Now photosynthesis. These are the steps of photosynthesis. First, the light energy is absorbed from the sun by the green chlorophyll in the leaves which is found in the chloroplasts. We'll go over um, the structure of a plant cell later on. Then the um, then energy is used to bring out about the reaction between carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose which is a type of sugar. Then the oxygen is produced as a waste product but is it really a waste product though because like we all just use it for respiration so it's actually useful. <laughs> Anyways, um, glucose Glucose is a large molecule made up of molecule <laughs> made up of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon atoms. Um, there are three uses of glucose in plants. So the first one is um, glucose is converted into chemicals required for growth and rigidity of plant cells, such as cellulose. Then you have the um, it being converted into starch which is a storage molecule and the plant just like converts it into starch when they have too much glucose and then converts it back into the glucose when they actually need the glucose then um, you have respiration so the glucose is broken down during the process of respiration now investigating photosynthesis the equipment you'll need an identification key You'd have done this experiment at school. Um, you need an identification key, which basically is a card telling you all the different species. You have to answer questions and you will find out which species of plant the plant is. Um, then a quadrat, which is like this square divided into, into like several grids. I think it's 100 squares. I'm, I think it's that, but anyways. Um, it, and you put it on top of like an area of Put it on top of a ground area and then using the squares you can calculate the percentage of how many of the plants are in the square do you, you guys know what i mean anyways light meter so the light meter measures how much light there is it's measured in the units of lux and yeah then um when doing this investigation it's preferable to do it along a transect transect line which can be like made 
using a tape, a tape measure. So a transect is basically like a way of investigating how some things change over an area. Um, a line is drawn with a tape and the quadrat is placed at set intervals along the line and the plants are counted. This gives a picture of how the lighting affects the growth of a plant. Now the factors affect in the rate of photosynthesis. So there are three factors. The first one is carbon dioxide concentration. The higher the amount of carbon dioxide available, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. This is the graph you need to memorize for that. Then the second factor is light intensity. The more light, the quicker the process of photosynthesis. And that is basically the same graph as the carbon dioxide one. And last but not least, temperature. With temperature, if it's too low, photosynthesis doesn't take place. But So the higher the temperature, the higher photosynthesis, um, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. But if it's too, late, too high, then the enzymes can denature, which means photosynthesis will not take place. That is the graph for photosynthesis. And moving swiftly on to enzymes. Enzymes. Enzymes are biological catalysts. They are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. So the cells made cells make enzymes according to the instructions carried in genes. I did mention this in my B1 video. Then the enzymes are specific, so only molecules with the correct shape can fit into the enzyme. This is called the lock and key model. Now, I strongly recommend you guys pause in this video to like look at this picture because it's like they're helpful but yeah <laughs> so once the enzyme and substrate are linked the reaction takes place the products are released and the process is repeated for enzymes to work to their optimum they need like their optimum pH and temperature which should be specific and constant so the biological name for the process of permanent change in an enzyme shape is denaturing so once an enzyme is denatured it stops working completely um, so the place where the substrate fits to the enzyme is called the active site and the active site is the part which becomes denatured um, so when it becomes denatured the change is irreversible um, that means you cannot get the enzyme to work again so these are the graphs for optimum temperature and optimum pH now different enzymes have different optimum working temperatures so for example the ones in our body they work best at 37 degrees um, below this their temperature below this temperature the rate of action slows down however if the temperature is too high the enzyme is denatured and stops working so that is basically what I said in terms of like photosynthesis and temperature now enzyme activity at different temperatures in a balance between Increased rates of reaction as temperature increases, um, changes to the active site at higher temperature, temperatures including denaturing. Now this is the structure of a plant cell. So that is a plant cell. That is the nucleus. It contains the DNA which ha carries the coding for making enzymes and other proteins. Next you have the mitochondria. mitochondria um, powerhouse it's the powerhouse of the cell gives energy takes nutrients and breaks it down by the way the ones in the blue it they are present in animal cells as well whereas the ones in the black are only exclusive to plant cells so these are the chloroplasts um, they contain chlorophyll photosynthesis takes place here then you have the cell membrane allows different chemicals to diffuse in and out allow substances then you have the cell wall which gives the plant cell rigidity then the large vacuole so this um, is used by the cell to store like waste materials and to regulate water levels but also I think it does store excess glucose um, now we have the cytoplasm these are where enzymes and other proteins are made now this is the endoplasmic rect but I don't think you need to know this but anyways this contains the ribosomes and proteins are made in the ribosomes I wrote mitochondria I'm really sorry guys but yeah 
Now, plants need other chemicals in addition to glucose. These roots take up minerals from the soil in solution. Nitrogen in the form of nitrate, nitrates is absorbed and used by plant cells to make proteins. D they do this through the process of diffusion. Now, diffusion is defined as the overall movement of a substance from a region where it is high in concentration to an area where it is lower in concentration. This is a good um, diagram of it. Now, for example, diffusion is like the main method in which gases enter and leave the plant. Um, so this is an example. An example of one is basically the stomata, carbon dioxide and oxygen is exchanged through the process of diffusion. Now, that is a diagram illustrating what happens, how the diffusion takes place in the plant. Now moving on to osmosis, osmosis is basically the same as diffusion but in water and it involves a partially permeable membrane. So this is a um, diagram illustrating osmosis. So I don't, so what happens is only water molecules can pass through that partially permeable membrane. Um, yeah, a partially permeable membrane allows water molecules through, but not solute molecules. Solute molecules because they are too large. Um, the movement of water into plant roots occur by osmosis. Active transport. Active transport is the overall movement of a chemical substance across a cell membrane from where the substance is in low concentration to where it is in higher concentration. So basically, the opposite of diffusion. Um, this requires energy, which is provided by respiration. So ATP in the diagram right there, it's basically just a um, just energy. Active transport is used in the absorption of nitrates by plant roots. So, for example, um, the night the soil ar around the plant's roots are rich in nitrates, whereas the um, roots themselves are not. So they use the process of active transport to move these nitrates along the um, body of the plant. Now, these, this is the structure of an animal yeast and bacteria cell. This is an animal cell. So basically, these, like, um, these properties of these cells, um, they do the same thing as what I've said in a plant cell, but like they don't include what other plants certain things that other pl plant cells don't do include what am i saying okay anyways this is like a um table summarizing what each cell has and yeah if it was a plant cell you'd basically just tick everything except the circular dna anaerobic respiration now, anaerobic respiration takes place when there is not enough oxygen. Um, it takes place in microbial cells, so like bacteria and puncture wounds. Animal cells, when humans do vigorous exercise. Um, that's why like you feel pain <laughs> when you do vigorous exercise. And plant cells in plant roots in waterlogged soil. So, anaerobic respiration, the ones that occur, the one that occurs in humans and bacteria, um, the word equation for that is glucose gives lactic acid and energy is released. Now for yeast, it's glucose gives ethanol and carbon dioxide and energy is released. Aerobic respiration, it releases more energy than anaerobic respiration, so like 18 times as much. Um, if humans respire anaerobically for a long time you basically die because of the buildup of lactic acid now applications of anaerobic respiration so first um, you the anaerobic respiration of yeast makes bread so the yeast is added to a dough made from flour salt water um, the dough is effectively a source of glucose that is needed for anaerobic respiration and this makes the bread rice brewing alcohol also yeast um anaerobic respiration of yeast so um 
This takes place in the absence of oxygen. The yeast respires anaerobically and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide instead of multiplying. Um, aerobic fermentation, though, this is like not anaerobic, this is aerobic. The yeast is exposed to air and grows rapidly on the sugar provided. And um, some alcohol is produced, but the majority of energy is used to produce more yeast cells. Now, number three, biogas. Um, so biotechnology is what is allowing us to have these applications of anaerobic respiration. Biogas, it is now possible to introduce bacteria to biodegradable substances such as manure, sewage and household waste in landfill sites. The anaerobic digestion leads to the production of methane, an explosive gas, and CO2. The methane is used as low-cost fuel. You probably have done that in chemistry. Anyways, that is before done. I wish you guys all the best for the exams that are coming up. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope you have fun revising.